In this episode, I am interviewing YouTuber Nikki Boyd. Nikki has a super popular YouTube channel called At Home with Nikki, and she has her own professional organizing business. You are really, really going to enjoy this one if you have ever wanted to work with clients from anywhere in the world doing something called virtual organizing. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. So Nikki has a wonderful YouTube channel that she has been doing for about five years, and we're going to talk to her all about that. I'm sure you have questions about it because that's probably how most of you know her. But Nikki also has some new projects going on this year. Actually, she seems like a woman that always has a lot of projects going on, which is really fun. She has some new projects going on this year, including she started offering one-on-one -on -one organizing services in her local area, as well as virtual organizing, which is a really, really cool thing that I know a lot of people want to know about. So we're going to chat with her about that. Nikki, I'm so glad you made it. And so Nikki, I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about how you started your channel and how you got into this whole organizing thing. And then we'll go from there. Sure. So first I want to say hi to everyone and congratulations to you, Jen. Thank you, you so much. I know you are glowing. You I'm are really very excited. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, to say about the start, it was just, and I don't want to say on a whim, but it really was. You know, I was living in the UK. My husband was Air Force. And so traveling with him, I've always had to kind of, you know, change jobs here and there and just kind of wherever we went, you know, I started fresh. And so when he retired and we moved back to Charleston, South Carolina, he was like, it's time to follow your dreams. I thought, okay, my dream is to be a housewife, sit at home and watch TV all day, you know, and- How can I make money doing that? I know, exactly. right? You know, it lasts for only so long and then you get bored. At least I do. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, what do I want to do? And I remember when I was in the UK, I had went to a, like a crafting party and the lady that hosted it, she said, you know, sometimes I make YouTube videos, you know, showing my craft or whatever. Didn't think anything of it. I really didn't know too much about YouTube at the time. But then when I got back, well, when I got to Charleston, it came back up and I said, I remember her making the video. So I was like, let me try this. So one day I got my little camera, did not even know how to work the video feature on the camera, just a little point and shoot. And so I recorded how to put together a teacup lamp and held on to the very first, first video. Held on to it for a couple of weeks, did not okay. show it to anyone but my mom, and then finally okay. posted it. And it, actually that's how it started. I just kept posting and posting, then I started getting noticed and more viewers. You know, of course it took, you know, a while, but I just stayed consistent and Woo, it just fine. <laughs> that is so awesome. So is that first video still up on your channel? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we can go back and see your progression. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, it's very cringeworthy. But yes, I did not take it down. It is there for everyone to enjoy. And it is a treat, I tell you. But, um, that is so funny. So you didn't even, you started with craft stuff and then moved on to organizing videos? No, it was basically just organizing my home. And that's how I got the name of my channel. I said, At Home with Nikki. So I was basically just filming things I was doing around my home. So if I was organizing a closet, I'd film organizing a closet. If I was okay. doing a craft, so whatever I was doing at home, you know, being a stay-at-home wife, I filmed. <laughs> so. That is yeah. awesome. So now it has, did it grow? You said it grew kind of slowly at first and then it really started to take off, right? Yes. It took about, I would say, two years. And that's of me okay. constantly posting content, you know, on a weekly basis, just posting. And then another YouTuber ran across my video, and she had a larger following, and she shouted me out. And from her shout out, she gave me my first big boost of, and many of you may know her, Organized Clutterbug. And she's an organizer also in Canada. And okay. Yeah, she shouted me out, and it just started really going from that point. So. That is so awesome. That is so cool. So now you have a team working with you behind the scenes to create your content. Yeah, I would imagine that it takes, that's like the bulk of your time is just figuring out what to do next, probably, yeah. right? Tell us about that. I have the most amazing team. I have to say that, first of all, because when I knew that I was transitioning to being a professional organizer, I knew that At Home With Nikki would still be one unit. I was going to have my YouTube and 
all of my, you know, blogging, everything that I do as a social media person, I was going to also um, incorporate into the business. So I didn't want two separate entities. And so bringing on a team, they know, you know, they knew that, okay, this is going to be one crazy job because not only do they handle, help me handle the professional organizing side, they help me handle the social media, YouTube, working with brands and all kinds of things. So never a dog's moment around here. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. When you started doing organizing videos, were you, you were somewhat aware that there were professional organizers who do that like one-on-one -on -one with people? Like, was that in your awareness that that was also a career that you could do? No, okay. not at all. The more I got into YouTube, the more my content drifted towards the organizing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I did learn that, you know, people do this as a profession and it, you know, it was really a big thing, but I did learn that later on into YouTube, so. Okay. But no, starting out, I had no clue. Yeah. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I have so many questions. Oh, so you told me on the phone a couple months ago that you had no idea there were so many professional organizers who followed your channel, right? No, not until I came to you. I, <laughs> I started, look, and, and by the way, I am a Super Gen fan. You are oh my gosh. awesome. And I have to, okay, I, I just have to say this. I'm going to be honest. I, when I was, as soon as I was starting the business, you know, I'm doing all my research and the first thing you hit is NAPO. And I hit NAPO and I'm looking, I'm like, okay, good information. Uh, okay. But just not, you know, me, I'm a little crazy. I don't, you know. Then I hit Jen and I'm like, what? I mean, it was just like I was home and I felt just so energized with my business and I felt motivated. And so I am a huge Jen fan. So you do no wrong in my eyes, Jen. You do no wrong. That is making my... <laughs> We thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. Well, and when you jo you joined my group, yeah. and that was actually back earlier this year. And then I had you know people like got all excited. All you know they were like we I follow uh, every one of your videos, and yeah. and that's what you said to me was surprising to you is that a lot of the girls who are my girls they're your girls like they yeah. know they said that you know you're one of the biggest inspirations oh, for you know learning how to organize different areas, and so. It really blew me away because I had went and posted when I first joined the group and I made a post and then I saw all these comments, all my friends out there on there was like, I didn't know you all were organizers too. So it was really, oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, that is awesome. So, okay, so here's one of my big questions. At what point did you, you know, become on your heart that you really wanted to start working with people one-on-one, -on -one, especially because you've gotten to this point with your YouTube channel where that is your full-time job and that obviously is going to take a lot of your time. But at some point, like, what was the process? Like, was it a conversation with a specific person or with your husband? Or like, when did you say, I really want to expand at home with Nikki? to do that? Well, you know, actually in the process of doing my videos, I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of friends out there that I have connected with and, you know, just the letters and everything, just the communication that, you know, how much I helped them with this or, you know, one lady and it just blew me away. I'm not telling too many stories, I'll, I'll start boo-booing, but she told me <laughs> she was literally in her bed for two years and she couldn't get out of her bed because her husband had passed away, she had three kids. And my videos got her out of her bed. And for the first time, oh, wow. I organized her refrigerator. And oh, wow. she showed me pictures of how she packed her kids' lunch. And she hadn't done that in two years. And oh, I was my God. like, wow. And I just have a huge passion for it. And I just grew into it. And I knew at some point with YouTube, I was ready to take it to another level. I felt like, yes, I was reaching tons of friends and things out worldwide. But I wasn't really doing a lot in my own community. And I didn't feel, you know, I was like, I want to do something at home I want. And I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And I knew yes. that this was, you know, the way to go. And, you know, that's the thing about this business, too, is, you know, it's one thing to love organization and, you know, to love doing that. But to be in business is a whole different baby, you know. Mm -hmm. So you really mm -hmm. have to have a passion for business along with having that passion for organizing, you know. Right. Okay. So awesome. So that was when I crossed paths with you is when you said you were busy launching your services. Yeah. So tell me about what that looks like for you. Like, how do you manage everything that you do in a day? Because you have a subscription service as well. And I know obviously your team helps you with a lot of this, but like, what does your week look like? Or how do you fit all this together? Which again, I think it's really an amazing direction that you you know, are taking this because I've met a lot of organizers who also want to start a YouTube channel or they want to do more with their blog. And so it's like, I would love to hear from you. Like, how do you make this work? Like creating content and coming up with new things yes. while also fitting in client work. Yeah. Well, I knew going into this, what was key for me is to keep the ability to stay creative, 
keep the ability mm -hmm. to do what I love because I don't want to do anything that I don't love in my life anymore. I just want, I want to do what I love and what I'm passionate about. And yeah. so I do have a wonderful team, which was a struggle for me in the beginning because, you know, I was a one man show for so long. It was scary, you know, and number one, having the responsibility of hiring someone, you know, that's a big undertaking. And then also just, I'm a, you know, letting go of that control because I have control issues. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, let we yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there was a, they will my team will tell you I am definitely growing in that area, but I knew I needed help. And so, you know, with my business now, what I do is we have lots of time for certain things. And so I know that I can do 12 virtual organization sessions in a week. We know that we can have 24 clients on the books at one time. We know that Nikki cannot do more than 24 clients on a book at one time. And so we yeah. have those blocks of time set for VO appointments. We have lots of time set for going out meeting with clients and um, they have to fit into those times or we can't service because I also have to produce content. So Mondays is blocked out for just strictly recording video, you know, and I do have someone editing the video, but it's important for me to film because I need to stay connected with my viewers and I don't want to get all business, you know, I want to stay connected. And so I want that camera shaking. I want them to know that, yeah, Nikki is behind the camera because it's going all over the place, you know? So. <laughs> So it's important for me to still film. And although, you know, sometimes my team helps me with filming, 90% of the time it's me. And so I do have to help with the editing part, but we have it structured. It's like a well-ran machine, but it's very structured as far as the time. And they are so wonderful because they allow me to be creative because like when I have appointment, the only thing that I have to do is they tell me, okay, it's time. I pull the file, sit down, and I can spend that time with that client and really focus on that client without having all of these, okay, send the invoice and do all this and all the crazy yeah. stuff, the behind the scenes, I'm not having to deal with. So it helps me really be able to help and focus my client, um, you know, with my client. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so you, you believe in focusing on your strengths and letting other people help. Absolutely. With their stuff, right? Yeah. That's something I that we talk about. Yeah. In here with the, I will, and they know it and they know me well. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so here's the million dollar question. We all want to know a little bit more about virtual organizing because that is something that some people have, you know, played with a little bit or experimented with or they've seen that other people offer it. They would love to know a little bit more. And I think each organizer probably does this a little bit differently. But how you mentioned to me, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, you said at first, you're like, I'm not really sure if this is going to work out that great. <laughs> but then you started getting into it with people and you're like, okay, I see how to be able to help people even remotely. So tell us how it works for you. Like, how do you, you get them to send pictures? Do you do video? Tell us about your process. So what happens is they typically contact us and then Jennifer, yeah. what she does is she speaks with them and she does all the marketing and she sells the packages and then, you know, she's awesome. So she does all that. She makes sure that, and then we talk afterwards. So after she meets with them, they send her pictures. And then, you know, I look at the pictures and we use Trello, by the way, that's what we use to communicate. Um, as far as um, working here in the office. And so okay. I'll put the pictures in Trello and I can see the client, all the information. And then I basically say, hey, this is a three session package or this is a you know six session package or whatever it is. She gets with okay. them. They do all the invoicing, scheduling. And then I meet with the client. Now, when I meet with them, I at first, Jen, I really was like, I don't know about this because it's like, it's over the computer. I'm not touching anything. They're doing all the work. How is this going to work? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell us more. Why yes. do you love it? Or well, I love it for the fact that I, one thing that scared me was that I didn't think that I could really help the client um, okay. not being there. And that concerned me because I was not going to take anyone's money if I truly was not helping them. And right. so I quickly learned that I can help them virtually. And we do, we hustle and they know me, they tell Jennifer all the time, oh, she's good with that camera. I can't get away with anything because I kept it all. And so, so do they always organize while you're on the phone? Oh, on yes. we're doing it together. We're going through every file. We're going through all the papers. They position the phones. I'm right there. And um, that's awesome. yes, and, I, and I'm coaching them along. Oh, you don't need that. Come on, let's move it along. Let's come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and we're seeing the progress after. Now, one thing that was key for me to do is even though it was virtual, I still wanted some type of ability to have a connection with them that was more tangible. So what I do do is like when we're doing, when we're organizing, I do all of their labels. So like if we're organizing a file cabinet, I, we create the labels here. We send it to the client so that they don't have to do that work. That's nice. Yeah, yeah that's really nice. Yeah. And so I feel like that's a way to connect with them instead of it's just all virtual. They feel like, you know, I'm really more connected to the session that way. So That is so awesome. So 
obviously a lot of the people you're working with, they know you because they've gotten to know you through your videos. Yes. You know, so they kind of, they have this special connection or it feels like that probably to them already mm -hmm. because they're like, I finally have the opportunity to work with somebody who already inspires me. So do you think that that's part of what makes it work so well is that they really want to do well, like for you and with you and keep up their results and their progress? I do. I think yeah. that it's, I feel like a lot of times with so far with, I would say 90% of my clients, I already, when I meet them, I feel a connection. Because okay, already good. they know me from YouTube or we've been chit-chatting over the years or there's some connection. So, and they know a lot about me. I may not know as much about them, yeah. but they'll know a lot about me. So we don't have that, you know, that time that we need to get to know each other is very minimal because we have yeah. a connection there. So, you know, that does work really well. And that's important, especially with being virtual, because when you're virtual, it can tend to be a little cold because you're not there. Uh -huh. So having, you know, establishing that rapport is so important. Yeah. So when you launched your organizing services, your virtual organizing services, did you announce it on YouTube or did you send out an email? Like how did people know that they can now like actually work with you if they want to? Okay, so I added some features on the website to basically, because my website was focused on, you know, my blog and YouTube and things like that. So I had to tweak it a bit, okay. get, you know, the organizing side of it. But so when I did that, you know, they started noticing the changes in the website. Um, I did put it in my newsletter. I send out a newsletter every Friday. So I did put it in there. Um, I think okay. I mentioned it on maybe one or two videos. But then we started getting a great response. So we don't really market as much. We do put it in the newsletter, but that brings us comfortable business. <laughs> so, so we haven't done too much marketing. We need to do more probably. But right now we're at a good pace and I don't want to get slammed. I don't want to, you know, because I want my customer service to stay on point and things like that. Yeah. And I'm still learning, Jen. I really am. I'm learning so <laughs> much about this business. I feel like a newborn baby when it comes to the whole <laughs> professional organizing business. So I want to kind of, yeah. you know, take it a little slow. Yeah. That is really, really cool. Okay. So tell us, so did, do you have team members that would ever work with you? Just forgive me if I don't know what direction you ended up going with this. Do you have team members that work with people in your area one-on-one, -on -one, like face-to-face? -face, or do you do that at all? Or are you yeah. just focusing on virtual? Okay. No, we do. I would say probably about 20% of our clients are face-to-face. Um, -face. It's not, and maybe even less. I would say 15%. We have okay. not started marketing in the area. I think I did one Facebook marketing ad in my area. But other than that, I haven't. Um, I did have some word of mouth. But we do go in the team. I mean, we do it as a team. Uh, you know, go to, you know, to me and someone else. But I do want to grow in that area, but not so much because that takes more time for me to leave the office, you know, have to go in sessions. And so it's harder, but I do still want to yeah. do a bit more in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and with your virtual organizing sessions, do you do one hour at a time or it, does it depend on the client? What is your usual session time? I do two hours. Two hours. Okay. I found okay. that two hours is enough time to get a lot done without overwhelming the client. After two okay. hours, they're spent most times. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the benefit, and I want to share this because I know a lot of people ask about this, you know, how can I take on more clients when I have a limitation, you know, hours of the day limitation, physical limitation, you know, some kind of injury or pregnancy or anything like that. And, you know, the huge benefit is that you do not have to be there hauling their stuff out. Yes. And that is one of the hardest parts about being a professional organizer is it is a very physical job is I think it's very emotionally kind of heavy for your yeah. client and it's physically heavy for you because you're like you know boom 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 like you're having to just go so I'm curious if there have you run across any people who are requesting virtual organizing who you don't think it's a good fit for yes I, I actually I can say this well this client is my first client is probably my most challenging client that I ever had <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't think that they were a fit for me, but I was learning and I was excited to do my first client, but they weren't virtual. They were in the community, but I quickly okay. learned that I was not, you know, they had something going on that was beyond what I could handle. So we have kind of got our screening process uh, tightened up so that we can make sure that we can only service people that we know that we can help, you know, but, you know, back to what you said about, you know, organizers being able to do this profession if they're pregnant or if they, you know, have those limitations, perfect. Virtual is perfect. You know, and a lot of times I notice with it, when someone contacts me, it's not that they can't do it physically. They can do it physically. That's not the issue. It's just they need that push. They need that friend. Mm -hmm. Someone saying, come on, let's do that. You don't need that. Why do you have 30 files? You only need two. You know, <laughs> they need that, you know. And yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's what the main thing is. So that's why virtual really works, because they need that friend pushing them along. And you can do that over the computer. 
you know? Yeah. yeah, that's so awesome. That's so cool. So do you have people who want to do kind of like a maintenance with you where, you know, they want to just do a virtual like once a month for a long time? Or do, are you finding some people kind of want to work all together more like your traditional clients? Are they yes. kind of, do they kind of act the same way with virtual organizing too, where some projects are more like, let's get it all done. Yeah. <laughs> all at once. I, and, I, and I haven't done, I haven't dabbled in the maintenance yet. Now we don't promote okay. it and I should, I have it on my website, but we haven't marketed that and we should, we really yeah. should. But right now we're in the, just the, you know, we'll go room by room. So they'll buy a package, we'll get through that package and then they'll go to another one. <laughs> so we just work yeah. through the house. So that's how it's been mainly going at this point. So. That is so, <laughs> so awesome. Okay. I'm not catching all the questions, but I do, I'm seeing one question I want to ask. D asks, how do you do uh, the consultation with a virtual organizing client? Okay. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. So what we do is I'll do a 30 minute consult. And so I'll get online with them. They take me through the space so that I can see the space and mm -hmm. it's only 30 minutes. So it's enough time for me to see the space, know what we have to do, can get back with them if they need to get anything um, for the session and we're good. But with me, my first thing, I'm all about decluttering, first of all. So to, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, Thanks. that's all yeah. I have to do is let's get in there and declutter first because we need to get rid of everything and then <laughs> talk about what we need to bring in. So, <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I hope that answered Dee's question. Also, have you had people, I'm not sure if you offer this officially, but do you have people that have also asked you to do some styling as well or help them style their spaces? Yes, absolutely. And that was also new to me because I wasn't thinking about that when I started the business I was thinking pure organization and then everyone's asking for the styling portion of it because you know they're seeing yeah. I do share that on YouTube so they want the combination of both and so I do now incorporate that and that's something new that we're kind of adding on we have our styling service that we kind of tack on to the organization part of it and really we have been getting a lot of feedback on that a lot of people um, signing up for that also yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah. Well, and anybody who's watching, that should not be a surprise because Nikki is well known for her gorgeous style. Oh. So <laughs> it's, she's like the last one to be aware of this, but she's wonderful. Oh, That's, thank you. Oh my gosh. So it's like, so somebody in the group said earlier today, it's like everything you touch just turns to gold. It's so, so cool to see that. It's so cool to watch. Thanks. So let me jump back to the YouTube for a second, if that's okay. Oh, sure. What tips would you give for an organizer or a professional organizer who wanted to start doing some videos online? Because I've been telling people, if you don't love to write, don't start a blog. Yes. <laughs> if you don't love to do video, don't do video. But if you think you might want to do it, what I think, you know, is a great idea is just to get on camera just a little bit because you're a perfect example of the fact that it's a great way for people to just get to know you yeah. whether you make you know you don't have to make your your video blog the focus of your entire business but just a way for them to show off a little bit of their aesthetic show a few little projects you know talk to the camera and just be real right yeah. so like what tips would you give those people out there because you know i have so many girls out there women ladies who feel so perfectionistic about everything they do and they're just like well if i can't do it professional i can't do it I'm sure you have some tips. Like yes, I have to raise my hand because I am and was one of those women. Yeah. I'm totally learning that, you know, there's no such thing as perfection. There's, it's no such thing. But the thing about it is, the great thing about it is you can record your video. You don't have to show it to anyone. You can practice 10 yeah. times before you put it out there and see if it's a fit for you. You don't have to post anything live, but you can see how you feel about it. You can look at the, you know, your project and before you even post it live, let a friend see it you know, mm -hmm. before you post it live. But, you know, know that because we are all professional organizers, we could really help so many people by just sharing, you know, the smallest thing, you know? So, you know, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're passionate about it. All of us here, we're passionate. We do this because we're passionate about it. And so, you know, when you get on there, just show, be passionate and be natural. Show what you love, like you're talking to your girlfriend or your mom and just do it. Try it one time. Just Put yourself out there and have no fear with it you know be fearless be fearless i know that's such good advice it's so hard i guess but you know i try to tell people just to keep doing the things that scare them a little bit yeah. and that is like how you grow yes yes <laughs> you have to do live, live video live i had the biggest fear all oh not the facebook live but i've been trying to just challenge myself to do it and do it and do it and do it but you know yeah it's true just keep challenging <laughs> I can definitely relate to that because a year ago when I started doing the Facebook live, I would have never thought anybody would ever listen to me. I mean, I had no clue. Sonia said, do it scared. I love that. Yeah. And do it anyway. Yeah. So 
So that is really great advice. All right, so if anybody else has any questions, please go ahead and submit them. I'm having to kind of scroll through to see them. So if I missed yours already, I apologize, but we do want to answer a few questions while we're on tonight. But Nikki, share with us, like, tell us a little bit about your subscription service and then tell us what you see coming next for you. Because obviously I was watching one of your videos today and you said, well, I showed you all this when I did this video last year. So I see obviously you're repeating some things seasonally and I'm curious where you continue to get new ideas for things that you want to keep putting out there. But yes. Well, one, you know, and you have stumps and, and, you know, with everything you go through, even with your business, you go through those times where you just, you know, you plateau and you, you know, you feel like, where am I going next? And YouTube is like that also. And I always try to share what is going on in my life. That's the easiest road to go. You know, whatever it is you're doing, that is what you share. And, and perfect yep. all the time where, you know, you're not showing I'm more organizing this, you know, videos right now or whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm really not doing a lot of organizing right now, but <laughs> because that's when I get, you know, refreshed. But, you know, my time tends to follow what's going on in my life. So that's why you'll tend to see repeats of certain things because I may have done my closet three years ago and I'm going back and I'm changing it up and I'll share that. All that's time. so smart though. And I'm sure that's another reason why people feel like they know you and they know your home. Like they've seen it evolve because they we love have. Yeah. 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 And me. I mean, watch the first video. You will definitely see a lot of growth. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. That is really awesome. All right, Lini wants to know, how do you charge for virtual organizing? I know you have your packages listed on your website, yes. so people can see that if they would like to. And she says, also, do you buy supplies for your clients or do you send the supplies list and let them purchase it? Well, both ways to answer that, both ways. Now, if it's the labels, I supply that. If it's Anything like bins and baskets, I give them the list. And that's what Whitney does. She creates their shopping list. She sends it to them. She follows up with them to make sure that, you know, they're prepared for our next session and, and all of that. So um, we give them a detailed shopping list. While I'm in sessions, we take measurements inside cabinets to make sure that when we choose the bins for them, we, we have the proper sizes and things like that. So I kind of take the load off them as far as... Questions for the client? Yes. Yes. Or does that depend? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And my team has started, you know, they get on me because a lot of times I'll, you know, I'll be in a session, I'll finish the session, I'm all hyped after the session and I move on to the next thing. So now we have this thing where 15 minutes after the session, I stay in my office, I don't even open the door after the session and I write up the homework. And then with you mean your team locks you in there? They lock me, do you guys believe that? They lock me in my office <laughs> <laughs> and make me do the homework. So they would have to do that to me too. <laughs> I know if I don't do it right after it, you know, you know, so, you know, I take that time and then it's fresh on my brain. So I make sure that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting everything in Trello and I just, you know, put it in Trello and then Whitney follows up, you know, she follows up with the client to make sure that they're trucking along, that they're ready for the next session, because that really truly helps us. Because if a client doesn't follow up, you know, it makes the next session difficult or, you know, we're not as far ahead as we should be, you know, right. right. And they're paying for it. They, you know, they want to get the most out of it. Sure, definitely. And so do you think your virtual clients are more or less on top of their things they need to do than your regular clients? Or do you see a difference between them? I don't see a huge difference. You know, I do okay. notice when I am, you know, when I do follow up, they're pretty good. I have to say they're pretty good. Or they, they're hiding it pretty well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because they can't, you can't see anything. Yeah, not I, they, you know, I can tend to put it in another room because I can't walk through the entire house. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're very smart. Yeah, but I do follow up and tell them, you know, at the end of the session, okay, you know, you know, don't stop. Take this bag, take it to the car, do this, you know, so that, you know, we can really have success with it. Definitely. Okay, a couple people want to know how you found your team. And are they contractors? Are they subcontractors or are they your employees? No, they're my employees. And that okay. was something that um, I was trying to figure out for go with it because I just wanted to get information. It was great, by the way, because it really um, helped with my decision of which way to go. And I knew with me having the YouTube and the business, I needed a family and a team, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So I knew I had to, you know, have employees. And that's a whole nother baby. <laughs> and finding my team, I knew that it had to be, you don't have to have all of this, you know, job history and all this. You just need to be creative, dedicated, and a hard worker. Yeah. Flexible. And so, I, you know, I was lucky to find that in everyone that I have. So. I found, I, you know, one place that I went as far as the video editing is to my uh, local tech school because they have a filming department. And so I'm very sad there. And that's a great resource as far as, you know, getting students that are like third, fourth year um, and kind of ready to move into the workforce. Yep. But they're still in school, so it really works. Also, Jennifer actually knew our husbands work together, so we connected. 
and okay. it's been awesome. Like, she's a rock star. Oh, okay. This is a good one. Sarah asks, do you require your virtual clients to have certain technology or specific camera or software platforms? How do you like to do that? So what we do is Jennifer, and she finds this, you know, she kind of talks with the client beforehand, but we tend to, mobile phone is the best. Okay. FaceTime, if they have an Android, we use Google Hangouts. Um, those are the two that I've really used. Um, I haven't used anything else because they can move around. They can position me, you know, where I need to be throughout the session without it taking too long and all of that. Good point. So, yeah. Yeah, FaceTime has been the most. When they walk you through their house that very first time, they're just showing you on their phone and they're kind of talking you through everything? Yes. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And so they'll take me around the room and then I'll ask, well, take me in the closet and can I see in the drawer? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm real nosy. So I... <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I'm like never. I was oh. I go to a client's house. I'm like, you're fine with me opening all of these drawers and doors, right? And yeah. they're like, yeah, you yeah. know, we're already at that point. <laughs> okay, question, question, question. Here's one from Erica. She says, I can tell from your videos that you live in the most beautiful, cleanest White House ever. Oh <laughs> do you my market, goodness. She said, do you market your services to kid-free households mainly, or do you market to homes with children as well? And then the rest of her question cut off, but let's just talk about that one. Okay, sure. No, because I know your children are grown, right? <laughs> yes, and yeah. my house is not immaculate. It was immaculate when I took the picture. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but no, I market to everyone now. I definitely, my demographic is women. You know, my that's just my demographic. It's funny because yeah. uh, a guy came in and he was just coming in from my business to try to you know market about the radio, and he was like, you know, what do you do? And I said, I'm a professional organizer. He's like, what? I said, I'm a professional yeah. organizer. He's like, what is that? And I said, you know, I go in home and I help you um, organize your space. And he was like, why would anybody pay for that? <laughs> Men do not get it. No. I think that at all. is just, <laughs> I just don't understand no. And I said, and that is fine. That is totally fine. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I know that women are my demographic. And yes, I do kid-friendly homes and, you know, empty nesters, everyone. Okay, awesome. And then Adele asked, have you done a video on your YouTube where you explain your consultation process? No, I don't. Now, I have a second YouTube channel. I don't know if you know about that, but it's at work with Nikki. At work with Nikki. Yeah. Okay, do you know about that? Yeah, and so that is something I do want to do on that channel. I'm actually, my team and I, we are in the works of my starting vlogging once a week at work so that I can, oh, okay. you know, because I get a lot of questions about professional organizing business and so that I can kind of take them through so that they can see my struggles, um, my successes, and, and just kind of give you yeah. a, a realistic picture of my day. So yeah, we are working on that. And in the process, that would be something that would be shown. Okay, fun. Okay, cool. So yes, Adele, look for that. Um, and then a couple other people want to know how many team members you currently have. You have I have two? five. I have five. Okay. Yeah. Which, yeah. Okay. I have so, a okay. who is the administrative marketing manager. So she handles, uh, she's basically the supervisor and manages the office and she's my everything. And she's a big with the subscription box. She makes sure all of that goes well and allows me to just stay with the creative part of it. You know, she frees me up from all of that. Then I have Whitney who is my organizing assistant and she handles that along with, you know, the follow up with all of the clients and she goes out on sessions with me and she's amazing. Um, I have Hazel, she is my graphic artist. So she does all our graphics. Um, we have the inserts in the box and anything that deals with that. Um, That's a huge part of the whole thing is just graphics, right? Yes, yes. Totally, yeah. Yes. And then, yep. too, I do sell printables on my website, so she does all of the printables and, Perfect. you know, all of those things there. Handle, as a business owner, it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You know, the professional organizer, if you think about just the organizing part of it, that's a task in itself. So, it's huge. Yeah. It is huge. Mm -hmm. And, well, and that's part of what I started – Part of why I started Pro Organizer Studio is because I know there's a ton of women out there who have this dream of starting their business, but the web design part, the graphic design part, the marketing part, like all of that is a totally different skill set than helping people like you're talking about. Like you want to help people and you're so good at it and you're you're one on one with people and like that's where you shine and that's your strength, but you really need <laughs> some help around you to to make it all work together. So that's why we're true. here too. That is that is a hundred percent true. You know, I know what my limitations are too. And even with my rebranding, you know, in February I rebranded my website and, and you know have this beautiful site and everything. And that's good and, and, and beautiful, but I don't know how to manage a website. I am not behind the scenes with that. So I knew that was something that, you know, and I wouldn't frustrate myself by trying to take that on. You know, I knew if I was going to invest in rebranding, I needed to be able to invest in having someone help me with it. So 
Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We do have a question too about your, um, tell us about your subscription box. How did you decide to do it and what does it entail? Well, I had wanted to do this for a while, but I couldn't find the right partner to help me execute it because I didn't want the traditional subscription box, a bunch of samples and things like that. I really wanted to be mm -hmm. where I could connect with my viewer friends and I could have full control. Yeah. Control freak again. But yeah. <laughs> I wanted that control. So I found the after I think it was about a two year process, but I found the perfect partners and it's going great. I send it out bi monthly and it's things that I love. I choose everything in the box. It's something I'm very passionate about. And the great thing about it is with me having Jennifer, she handles all the logistics so that I can really just create the box. So I can the box and she makes the magic happen. <laughs> she makes it happen. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, how long have you been doing that part? Since June. So next oh, you just launched. Next okay. week, my third box goes out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so again, was that something you just kind of launched through your email list and told people about? Well, on my YouTube channel. You, did, you told them on your newsletter. YouTube channel? Well, okay. And it was the perfect fit because a lot, over the years, I've been showing so much of my life and all these tidbits that I've used from my dishcloth that I love and the products that I love. And so now I'm able to, you know, put them in the subscription box and share them, you know. So that is cool. Yeah. yeah. So the subscription box has been pretty good so far. Oh, like, yes. It's been. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It, now, it has been a growing process because it's all new to me, but, you know, with the shipping and all of those things. But we're now in the third box and everything's kind of smooth sailing. Cross my fingers. It's smooth selling now. But yeah, it, that is that, cool. something, it was a new baby for me. It really was. Wow. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Thank baby. you. On a new baby this, uh, this year. Oh. <laughs> and you know, we were talking today and uh, before the, my team left and they and I had proposed something else and they were like, oh, we knew something new was coming. We knew with you was something. I was like, yeah, I never want to stay stagnant. I'm always looking for the next thing. You know? Do you feel like, you must be like me, where you like your brain never quite stops thinking no. of new stuff or how to change things a little bit. That's, I have the same blessing and a curse, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. Um, Omega says, before you ever did a session one-on-one -on -one with a client, sharing and teaching online with YouTube, I felt mm -hmm. really confident, you know, because mm -hmm. I've so many people technically virtually it's just, yeah, it hasn't been one-on-one. -on -one. I, it's just, it's natural for me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I see that. Isanik says, Nikki, I love your video on how you clean your office weekly with your team. What are your suggestions for starting a similar system when working with people who are very disorganized? So you mean like a client? I think, yeah, I think she just wants to get your best organizing tips for people who are, I haven't seen that particular video, but about cleaning your office weekly with your team. Okay, yeah, when I, what we do is we take the last 15 minutes of, as, of the day and we clean as a team because technically that's like with it being actually four of us in the office, you know, you take 15 minutes per person, you have an hour worth of cleaning in 15 minutes. So, so that's, Absolutely. you know, so really how, good. how we look at it there. But if she's talking about with her business, you know, I think that, you know, when you have that team, that team building and having people around you that are, you know, willing to just do it all, do what it takes to get the job done. And they're not kind of set in their own mode because that's what we're about is, you know, getting the job done. And we set up those systems so that we get the job done. And if you're talking about a client, you know, what if I have someone who is just extremely, which I do, disorganized, you know, my first thing is just to clear the things that are just declutter because a lot of times they just have so many things that are just in the way they can't think. And then from that point, I kind of going to get out there and I'm going to learn. I'm going to watch YouTube videos about it. I'm going to find my gin and I'm just going to jump out there and do it. Um, because you can, a lot of times, and I know, you know, you can think about things for years and you can write all kinds of notes and you can plan for years. So true. You know, like here. Yeah. You're still here. <laughs> or, and you you're can, like, I don't, I haven't figured it all out yet. So I can't start. That's why I started wanting to talk to people like this, you yeah. know? Yes. Yeah. Just that, get out okay. there and just do it. And the great thing about our profession is you don't have to have a building. You don't have to have all of these things. You can start from home, business cards. You can get, you don't have to have, even with YouTube. You don't have to have them. No, YouTube is free. You don't need a yeah. camera. Use your phone. You know, just make sure the lighting and the sound is up, you know, good. You don't need big equipment to start that. And that is where you can start with your marketing, you know. You know, you have a home. Your home is your yep. That's where you can start with your portfolio, your own home. Mm -hmm. If you look at my oh. home, I, it's my home because, you know, literally yeah. I have that portfolio to have a lot of clients where I can take pictures and, and have that on my website. So using friends and home, that's what, you know, use your, your resources now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know. You're so right. I think I feel like I hear that from people. One is they're saying like, well, I'm scared to put pictures of just my house, like before and after out there. And I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> nobody has to know that, first of all. And second of all, you got to start somewhere. And yeah. like, and if you even have one area of your house that you're like, this is cute. You know, I did this and I can make like good photos of this. That's a great place to start with a video or start with some pictures. And I'm, and you're the perfect person to point to is like you just said, your whole house has basically been your portfolio, but you're showing your thought process in every single yeah. video that you, and yeah. that is like, that's like where the magic happens. And obviously people feel your personality. Yes. Yes. So, and then too, if you feel awesome. in some, you know, and if you don't feel confident doing it at your home, go to your friend girl's house. You're, you know, if you, if she yeah. has a closet that needs organized and say, Hey, let's organize your closet and yeah. pictures of the before and that, you know, you know, use your resources, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. I feel the same way. Yes. Okay. Dina has a question. She says, how has it been as an African-American woman in this industry? Great. I mean, I don't see, I guess on YouTube, they're not, now there's more. But when I started, I don't remember too many African-American women doing the same concept that I was doing as far as showing uh, the home and organizing. But then quickly, I noticed that there were a lot more. Maybe I didn't find them. You know, I didn't see them right off. I'm not really sure. But you know, I don't see any different, any struggles or anything. And my clients, they're from every walk of life. So yeah, just, yeah, 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 but no. I think, well, and I definitely have noticed that, you know, I've heard my clients say, you know, it doesn't really matter how long somebody has been an organizer. It's like, it's all or where they came from or what their background was. It's like, it's all about who you connect with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's another reason why this is such an awesome opportunity if this is something that people love, you know? Yeah, that's true. And it's all about relationship building. Relationships, you know? Yeah. All people regardless. So if you connect with someone, no matter, you know, what color or where they're from, you know, I, you know, I had some of the women that I have met here, a, a lot of them are from India. And, you know, you never think, I'm like, oh, and we just, we connect. And, you know, they may be yeah. from England, but we connect, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we all have that thing in common, you know, we're mothers, we're women, we love our home, we love, you know, mm -hmm. our home. we all have that in common, you know. That is really, really cool. That is really awesome. And you've gotten the you know, more chance than any of us probably to connect with all kinds of people who are reaching out to you and saying, you know, I need a little bit more help than just watching a video. Like I need a little bit more encouragement. And like you said, yeah. pushing them where, where it's needed and encouragement where, you know, that's called for. So mm -hmm. it's just awesome to hear you talking about that. So thank you for sharing. Oh, no. Okay. Let me do a few more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, okay. So Omega says, and this is so funny because I was thinking about this when I was planning my interview in my head with you. <laughs> I was wondering if Nikki Boyd has a Nikki Boyd method, but Omega asked, do you have any opinions on the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, the KonMari method? I do agree with it. I think that, you know, having those things that you love is important and just clearing those things out that, you know, if you don't love it, don't keep it. And I, you know, I'm, the problem is I love a lot. There's a lot of things I love, so it's hard to <laughs> But, you know, with me, Love all I, things white, all things white, which helps me yeah. because it helps because I am a very, I have so many things going through my mind. I'm, okay, I have this cabinet that I can fill up with all the teacups I love, but I can't go beyond that. You know, so I do appreciate that method, but I think that you should have, you know, what you love in the quantities that you feel happy with, but just give yourself reasonable limitations, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. So do you find that you have sort of any particular What's the word? I guess everybody has their own sort of method that they bring together from their life experience as an organizer. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time. It's like, that's okay. It's okay to be a little bit more minimalist or a little bit more kind of, yeah. you know, color coded. And, you know, people come from different backgrounds. So yeah. do you feel like you, do you feel like you try to teach your clients your way of thinking or do you more like try to go by their personality and kind of, yeah adjust based on what works for them. No, I have, I re you really have to go, I feel that you have to go by their personality because what works for me is not going to work for you or work for someone else. But that's right. That's the, the beautiful thing about what we do is, you know, the ability to go and assess and look at someone's situation and be able to give them tips that are going to work for them. You know, how mm -hmm. I use the binder system for my files, but that's not going to work for everyone. You know, they may need, you know, hanging files or they may not even need that type of filing system. So, you know, right. You know, no, I totally, I never try to go in and kind of make everybody do what I do. You know, that's totally not my goal at all. You know, I love, and, right. I love, and that keeps my job creative because it keeps me on my toes because I'm always figuring out ways, okay, that's not going to work for her. How is she going to function? Okay, let me figure this out. And so that's yeah. the fun part of my job is figuring out how to make their life simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
do you think do you think it surprises any of your clients that you work with remotely that you are a little tougher with them than maybe you come across in your videos or do you think that they kind of expected that a little bit i think a few of them were a little surprised because they did comment to jennifer oh you know yeah she oh whoa she's tough you know but <laughs> but for the most part you know I make it fun, you know, we do laugh yeah. through it, and I'm like, girl, you know, I'm not, I, don't show me another purse. Do not show me another <laughs> so It's fun, but I, you know, I'm all about, let's get that stuff out of your house, you know, so. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Erica said, as Nikki always says, your stuff that is no longer her wanted could be another person's blessing. Yeah. So your little mantras have definitely taken hold uh, in their mind. Misty asked, and I think that this would be a great last question to end on. Yeah, I was seeing what time it was. Misty asked, what has been your biggest challenge since starting, and what has been your greatest reward? My biggest challenge has been letting go of control. I will be honest. Yeah. Like I said, I was a one-man show, so really, I have an awesome team. But just having that trust and letting go. You know, I feel like, in the beginning, I felt like I had a team, but I was still doing everything because I did. I felt like only Mickey could do it. And that's not the case. You know, <laughs> yeah. that is so not the case. I have great people around me. I have very smart people around me and they can handle it. And so, you know, releasing that control has been a big one for me. And I'm not all the way there, but I am doing so much better with it. But <laughs> that has been my biggest challenge. The success, I would say, is just the amount, being able to manage everything and be a benefit to my clients. You know, that's the thing that's the most important to me is being able to not start this business and forget about, you know, my YouTube family and all of my mm -hmm. friends out there. That's so important for me. And I think some of them, and someone had, had even mentioned that to me is that we thought when you started your business, you were going to, you know, kind of not do videos as much or, you know, kind of go to the side. No, that I am so passionate about them and also about my friends, you know, so, you know, being able to keep all that together has been my biggest accomplishment, I feel. Yeah. That is so awesome and so inspiring. I know I speak for a lot of the girls who are watching this now and that will watch this on the replay. I want to just read this comment. Melody said, Nikki, you were one of the first women I started watching organization videos on YouTube. I absolutely love your channel and your morning cleaning routine has changed my life oh! as far as a clean home. And this is a professional organizer talking to you, saying to you, I you have inspired her and changed her life on a personal level. And I know so many other of my girls out there are saying the exact same thing. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people watching this on the replay who are gonna make be making even more comments along the same line. So just from all of us and from me, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. You guys about your story and about your business. Oh, thank you. It's incredible. Went to Pro Organizer Studio and for sharing your oh, story and your so tips. I am so honored. I'm like fanning out. I'm here with Jen. Thank you for having me here. Well, I hope we can do this in person one day because yes. hello. South Carolina girls in the house. We, we have that far away from each other. Oh. I know. Anytime you want to have lunch with me, you just let me know. Yes, we will. <laughs> no, for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Well, thank you all so much. You watched this, and thank you, Nikki, for being here. If you guys watch this and you don't follow Nikki yet, you need to go on YouTube. It's at Home with Nikki. She is tons of videos for you to binge on or just listen to as you're driving in the car. I find a lot of people really like that kind of use them like podcasts almost. Nikki has her website at homewithnikki.com where you can see all of her services and all the many things that she has going on, which is incredible to go check out. Like she said, she does a newsletter every week, which is I'm sure, sure full of valuable content and the latest updates. So I know she would love for you to subscribe to that. And if you guys watch this and didn't know me or didn't know anything about what Pro Organizer Studio is, we are a business and design resource for professional organizers. And if you didn't know that getting paid to organize other people was a thing, now you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki is an incredible inspiration. We also have lots of resources for you at ProOrganizerStudio.com. Thank you again, and we look forward to sharing many more interviews with you in the future. Nikki was a fabulous first person to come on to our channel and share with us, and we look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you again, Nikki. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.